Hey, welcome back, Apex Peeps. Last lecture involved formation of coal. Like, for example, when vegetation dies and it falls to the earth's surface, sometimes some situations remove oxygen, like when that vegetation falls into a swamp or a bog, and no decomposers could live in that environment because it's void of oxygen. Therefore, the biomass gets preserved. And over many, many millions of years of additional layers of soil compressing that organic matter to fossil fuels. And how does that then fossil fuel become a solid or what dictates whether it's a liquid or a gas? Those are the things that we reviewed last lecture. But now after the coal is formed, how do we extract that coal? An extraction of the coal usually involves one of three methods. First would be strip mining or surface mining. This is when the coal seam forms closest to the surface of the earth and the coal company doesn't really have to spend a lot of money. I mean, it still spends a lot, but compared to the other two methods to remove the coal because all they really have to do is scrape away the topmost part of the soil to expose the coal seam beneath. And if you think about the, the different grades of coal, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite, I mean, it kind of makes sense that lignite is the most commonly type of coal mined through strip or surface mining because lignite is closest to the surface. But bituminous and anthracite can be pushed to the surface due to plate tectonics or erosion. And my point is, just because lignite's close to the surface, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the only type of coal that is mined through strip or surface mining. And as I go through these types of coal extraction, I want you to think of possible effects to the hydrosphere, possible possible negative consequences to the biosphere or the geosphere or the atmosphere. And by removing the topmost layer of soil, you're removing vegetation, you're probably decreasing the, the chance of infiltration and in, increasing the chance of runoff, which could lead to flash flooding. So just keep those things in the back of your mind. The second type of coal extraction would be mountaintop removal. Mountaintop removal is a pretty damaging method. Companies come in and clear cut forests like you're seeing in, in this, these pictures. So right away, the negative impacts on the biosphere is pretty apparent. It displaces animals and humans. And once the layer of soil is exposed after clear cutting, then companies come in and drill holes and, and fill the earth with explosives and then blow that up. And the top layer of soil and rock is blown to bits and that exposes the coal seams. So then the coal company comes in and extracts the coal that way. Now, I mean, just take a look at its natural setting over yonder and then where they remove the mountaintop. And what do they do with all that earth? I mean, where, where's this truck going? And this, this truck is huge, by the way. The scale doesn't do a good job of it. And it's taking this earth and, and dumping it on the, over the side of the mountain. Now, this earth can fill streams. And like we talked about in the hydrosphere, those headwaters are really important to the overall trunk stream. So potential trunk stream volume can decrease because headwaters are being dried up because of these, these trucks dumping the rubble down at the very top. And it's just covering these, these trunk streams or little tributaries higher up in elevation. When it rains, the rainwater picks up the heavy metals, and those heavy metals ex that the rainwater picks up from exposed coal seams can, can be flushed into a local stream or a river, which could cause a lot of problems environmentally. I mean, mountaintop removal is very damaging to the environment, very damaging to the environment. So again, all these things that I just talked about, the negative consequences of strip and mountaintop removal, by the way, they're, they're kind of the same principle but mountaintop removal is a little bit more, I guess, involved. Displaces animals and humans. Check. Lack of roots because the vegetation is gone. That increases runoff and possible flooding. Check. Lack of roots increases soil erosion, which could increase turbidity. Yep, burrs. I just got done explaining how toxic chemicals and heavy metals can be flushed into streams. As the surface water interacts with exposed coal seams, not a good thing. Check rubble covered streams and tributaries which could affect the flow of major rivers. And one last thing that I wanted to bring up is this, the, the natural landscape is so, so altered that the surface water 
is then could possibly be diverted and channeled to areas that aren't used to getting flooding. So these, these areas that live in the base of these mountains in Appalachia are really, really struggling with, with severe flooding that they're really not used to receiving because of all the, the vegetation soaking up the water. And, and now the, the water, the surface runoff is channeled in different ways, which can be very problematic. Now the third type of mount uh, of coal extraction would be subsurface mining. And this is what we're kind of used to thinking about in, in the old school ways of coal mining in Pennsylvania, where they dig shafts underneath the ground and, and mine out the coal that way. And negative consequences of surface mining could be land subsidence, like we learned in the hydrosphere. In the hydrosphere, we were just mining groundwater. But now it's the same principle, we're just mining coal. And as you can see, the coal seam in this picture was, was taken out, which means that the, the weight of the land above it can't be held anymore, and this, this land starts to sink and sag. It's land subsidence 101 for you. We're seeing it right here in the South Hills in Upper St. Clair. The rec center had to close the, its softball field because of land subsidence. And this is the, the USC police station Right next to that, there is a basketball court and a park. And you can, I was there and you could definitely see how it's cracked due to land subsidence with, with underground coal mines. Now, we talked about this extensively in the hydrosphere. As all that rainwater sifts through abandoned coal shafts, you know, it comes in contact with pyrite, which is a mineral that contains sulfur. And as that groundwater comes in contact with pyrite, now, toxins such as sulfuric acid and iron are produced, which drastically lowers the pH. But remember, as iron is, is exposed to oxygen, it produces iron-3. And then rust is forming, which is a byproduct of this iron meeting oxygen. So it pulls the oxygen out, it lowers the dissolved oxygen, it decreases the pH, and that rust is a byproduct that could increase turbidity. You know, Abandoned mine or acid mine drainage is not a good thing. And that is a result of subsurface mining, like you're seeing here when we visited Wingfield Pines. So all of these things right here are negative consequences of subsurface mining. In fact, right here, which is very dangerous work conditions, black lung, that, that is a disease when you know, workers were down in the mine shafts, all that black coal dust were breathing in and those miners were experiencing or developing lung cancer. Now, ways to get around that now is it, miners spray the sides of these shafts with a limestone slurry mix, which keeps the coal dust at bay and keeps it from entering the, the atmosphere in the mine. And there has been some mine explosions and collapses, such as the Q Creek PA, the upper big, uh, upper big Branch Mine in West Virginia that killed 29 people. So, all right, well, I hope that you learned a little bit about how coal is extracted. And the no next lecture is gonna focus on once it's, once it's extracted and it's shipped to market, how in the world do we use coal and fossil fuels to generate energy? Until next time, adios.